Hello there, I'm Leo Tierney and I'm the director of Star Trek Deception. Star Trek Deception is a fan film being created by a group of friends who all have one thing in common, a love for science fiction, and more importantly, Star Trek. Hello there and welcome to the making of documentary for Star Trek Deception. My name is Leo Tierney and I'm the director of Star Trek Deception and hopefully this video should give you some insight into how we actually went about making this fan film pretty much and hopefully you should enjoy it. First off I'd like to talk about how we came up with the idea for Deception. It first started off with that I had a, an empty room in our um, front reception room. We wouldn't use anything for it except for maybe a dumping ground we stick tables and chairs in there. But um, it pretty much was an empty room and the perfect place to create a, a set for a, um, a shuttlecraft or a, um, as we used a runabout. Once we had that we just had to come up with a story to base around two characters inside the shuttlecraft cockpit and how we can actually make an interesting story just with two characters. But before we started doing anything we thought it would be best to do some research. And I have right here the Deception Bible, I suppose you call it, which includes loads of uh, reference images about um, well, mainly from Star Trek DS9 with loads of uh, pictures of cockpits and just mainly reference stuff, mainly to a budget just to get the idea of an overall feel and also when we're actually building, building the set to make sure we're actually being authentic to the original series. In this we also have the, um, the script. This is also used for the, the actors during the film and they've had this in front of them so just in case they forgot their line they have this to a reference to. So we have some crude storyboards here that I drew at the beginning of production just to understand the camera angles I could possibly use as storyboards are useful. I created a CG version of the room and uh, create a quick mock-up of the arches in CG and that and create some digital uh, characters sitting in the chairs just so I can create some uh, CG cameras to see what actual angles I could possibly use and um, also to see where any uh, story points were getting boring like um, I believe during uh, this scene the original opening with the, um, the Miranda class of Starship getting destroyed by the Starbase was introduced just so it kind of makes the intro to the film start with a bang. When I started creating um, uh, ideas for the um, set construction I created um, many models um, one of them you have seen in the Kickstarter videos of the foam board. I think it's always best to actually make smaller models of what you're going to make before you start creating big stuff because I was able to figure out what would work and what wouldn't work. For costumes, costumes I wanted to, for the Starfleet characters, I wanted the costumes to um, look pretty much season, season three costumes of uh, Next Generation just because I felt they looked a lot nicer and you don't really get to see that many um, fan films with this type of costume in. They're usually mainly using um, first contact style costumes. Also the uh, badges, the badges were um, brought off of eBay I believe. Um, they're quite expensive to be honest. About Ten pounds per badge, which is quite odd. But um, luckily some of them came with the um, costumes. Also the uh, rank pins. I originally wanted to use uh, little batteries because they're extremely cheap, which you can buy pack of 20 for like a pound or something like that. But um, unfortunately um, the super glue that I used to attach it never really seemed to work. Most of the uh, set construction was already detailed on Facebook. I've been constantly putting up pictures of um, each stage but um, there's also a lot that I haven't put on because I wanted to save them for this, for this video. People were interested in actually how I made the um, set and um, to be honest it was some um, it was pretty, pretty easy after doing the planning, it was pretty easy to put together. It was a lot of hard work, wasn't it? It was mainly made out of um, small pieces of um, timber, pretty much, or, or long pieces depending on the desk size or the arch size. Also uh, sheets of um, MDF. A lot of people were quite interested in the, um, uh, the detailing of the uh, ship as well. Um, how did they actually do the, um, the L-cars display, for instance? which once again was quite easily done. The way I did it was quite low tech and quite cheap as well. The computer displays literally printed out on paper using a ton of black ink and then literally sellotaped onto black paper. 
and then with plexiglass literally slapped on top and then cut around the oval shape. I'm surprised how well it actually came out to be honest. Um, I was expecting it to look completely naff because obviously in the um, Next Generation Deep Space Nine they have backlit displays which creates a nice illumination effect. Also with the uh, detailing of the um, ships I've used uh, two two chairs for the um, seats which are actually these white chairs that are able to get off eBay for quite quite cheaply and um, they're not the exact chairs that are used in the series because um, I believe those those ones don't have armrests. I um, also created uh, test shots myself to um, see how shots would um, would look. This also helped with uh, lighting tests because it allowed me to um, figure out places where I would actually be able to um, put the lights rather than having to figure that out on the day. For the um, Starfleet actors, this has been said in the uh, Kickstarter video before, but um, Commander Stove is played by James Sargrove and Lieutenant Miller is played by Brick Huggins, which are both my old college friends. <laughs> We're going through a boulder field or whatever they call it. <laughs> boulder. 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 Asteroid field. <laughs> a boulder field. Boulder field. <laughs> it's a field full of boulders. <laughs> For the uh, Klingon actor, that was quite a, um, quite a surprise because that was one of the, the things that I was worrying about was to actually get some good Klingons in this film. The, the actor who played uh, General Karloff was uh, Stu Lucas. He's been um, playing, uh, playing Klingons probably longer than I've been alive, which is a big help. In fact, to uh, keep the uh, realism of the, um, the backgrounds for the, uh, the green screen stuff. I actually created uh, small miniatures, as you can see right here. Obviously, um, this is the Klingon bridge. Obviously, this was massively color corrected in the um, vinyl thing to make it much more darker red, add some nice light rays through it. Came across quite nicely. I also created, as you see, the um, miniatures for the back of the, um, the runabout set. As you see here, I've got a couple of um, couple of bits here. This is the um, transport bay. I also have some arches here that I've created. But it's always best to have um, some real elements if you're trying to make something look more real. Also, on a, on a final note, um, people are wondering how long this film took to make. But um, uh, I believe um, it wasn't too long, actually. It took about six months, I think, for a, um, an eight-minute video, So, um, which isn't too bad considering. So I believe that's um, everything. Um, thank you for um, spending time to watch this um, making of uh, a video. If you have any more um, questions you can uh, send us a, an email. So yeah, um, to all you uh, Kickstarter backers, thank you for um, backing us and um, hopefully we can continue the, um, the adventures of um, Stoven and Miller and the USS Thames and the USS Longshanks and uh, find out what actually happens to this Klingon Starbase? Are they going to stop it? Are they going to blow it up? Let's hope they blow it up so we get some more explosions and um, thank you again. Mm -hmm.